Well, hello there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of DIYing with me today? Well, come on in. Let's get started. What do I have going on for you for today? Well, today's DIY, please hold. I am going to be showing you how I make, oh, there we go, this tiered tray. Now this tier tray was one that I actually threw together last minute because I somehow donated my last tier tray. I don't know how I did that, but it got donated when I was purging and cleaning out the house. And because I had some extra wood on hand, this was something that I just kind of threw together and it has ended up being my absolute favorite tier tray ever. Today's tier tray is going to look almost exactly like this and it is gonna cost you a whopping $7 to make. This is one you are not gonna to wanna to miss and it is using 100% Dollar Tree items. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna quit my cabin, let's jump into it and let's make a wood tier tray on a budget that you are absolutely gonna love. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Getting started with today's tier tray, you're going to need five packs of these tumbling tower blocks. These are a Dollar Tree 72 come in this pack, so you're going to need five of them for this tray. That's it. The glue I'll be using today is this wood glue by Super Glue. Now, when I'm attaching these blocks, you're going to see that I have a ruler there that is meant to keep them nice and straight, an L ruler or whatever it's called, a corner ruler. You can find those at Dollar Tree. They work pretty well, too. I show six blocks here. You really needed eight, but I go back and fix it later. I'm going to start off by putting glue on the block just like you see me doing here. And on this outside row of blocks, I'm just going to put some on the bottom edge here. Once I got those blocks good and pushed together, this is where I'm going to place more glue here on top just to make this a bit thicker. So I'm going to do it two layers thick, two Jenga blocks thick because it's going to add to the substance, the sturdiness of this tear tray and the more sturdy, the better because then it's going to hold weight. Here you will see that I still had it three Jenga blocks tall, but now I am going to add um, another block because it did need to be four. Now fast forwarding, I glued all my blocks together and this is what you're gonna need to put this tray together. You're gonna need four sets of blocks that are eight blocks tall. So that's just going the lengthwise here, eight tall. You're gonna need four sets of those. And again, these are two Jenga blocks thick for sturdiness and stability. You're also gonna need four sets that are seven blocks long. And again, that's going across so each um, piece is going to be 14 pieces. Then off to the side here, you're going to need four sets that are four Jenga blocks tall, just like so. Once you have all those glued together, it really only took me about 45 minutes to do. We're going to take the first set that is seven blocks tall. And here at the top, I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to measure down on one end about a half an inch. And I'm going to do that on two of uh, these wood pieces that are seven blocks tall and you only need to measure down a half an inch on one end now this is going to help us place um, our crossbar and again i am using a ruler to help keep this straight now taking the two pieces two of the four that are eight blocks tall I'm gonna place just a bit of glue here on the end, just like so. And this is gonna to go together really easily. So if I don't articulate it perfectly, I'm sorry. I'm gonna place it standing up right where I put that line that I marked down a half an inch. And this is gonna be where our plaques lay on this part that's actually standing up. And so we're gonna have two of these, one here at the top and one at the bottom, just to kind of give you a better visual in your head if you're kind of lost at where I'm going with this. And so you can see here how this tray is already coming in. This is gonna be the top tray here and then there at the bottom will be the bottom. 
yeah, see, look, all together. Now taking another um, piece that is eight blocks tall here at the bottom, I measured up, I want to say, a an inch and a half from the bottom. And this is where I am going to place that second or the third, I'm sorry, the third set of blocks that are eight tall. These are the longer blocks that are going to go across. And I'm going to do this on both sides here. And so this will be the second shelf of the tier tray, the bottom shelf. And below it will be, I guess, the legs of the tray. And that's why they're a bit longer than the top. But if you kind of place both of them together, well, okay then you'll get placement even so that way when you put your plaques down for the tray it's not going to be uneven and that way you can kind of move your pieces so your i guess the plaque part of your tray lies flat and straight and not at an angle once it's dry i'm going to go ahead and separate them and take two of the jenga block pieces that are four tall now these are gonna be the crossbar that actually just kind of um, act as support underneath uh, where the plaque will be for the tray. And so again, you're just gonna place these right below those two pieces. And I'm just using the wood glue. I'm not using any nails or screws because this wood glue by Super Glue is amazing and it's gonna hold the weight. And so this is what you should be left with. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side that we just did here, which is really just easy. This tray is gonna take you a whole hour and a half to dry, and this is what you should be left with at the end. Now for this, when I did this, I had the idea of using these plaques here that you can get from Dollar Tree that just came out a few months ago. They came in three different colors, so I picked up two of each color, the black, love this, this brown one and Dollar Tree has even a whitewash one out, which makes it so cool because these are perfect for versatility. If you place all three of them on the tray, you're gonna have um, a stronger tray and you can switch out the base of your tray. Now with this, I did paint um, my tray with Waverly's Hazelnut. I didn't leave it the raw wood. If you want to, you can. I just kind of wanted to try and disguise that uh, I used Jenga blocks. Dollar Tree has some great beach decor out. So let's take a look at a tray that you can do right now using items from the Dollar Tree. The paint colors that I will be using for today's tray are some of Waverly's chalk paints in the color of agave, maize, hazelnut, and celery. Along with those, I'll also be using some of Hello Hobby's Swan White. Now, this is not a stark white. It has kind of a tan undertone to it, which goes perfectly with sand. And I'll also be using some of Craft Smart's Coral. Since this is a beach-themed tier tray, let's start off with the word beach. This word I wanted to kind of give it that ombre feel. So I'm going to start off with the agave at the bottom, which is the darker of the blues that I've chosen for this tray. In the center there, I'm going to go with the celery. And there at the top, I'm going to go with the swan white. Now it is really easy to blend these colors together just by putting a bit of water on your brush and using a clean brush that is, and just kind of go over where those colors meet and they're gonna blend nicely and you won't have any harsh lines. Dollar Tree has this beach decor out by Shore Living. It's amazing. They've got a lot of fun pins and DIY embellishments. Would you look at how cute these whales are? We're not gonna need the clothes pins, but the whales themselves are cute. These dolphins are stinking adorable. We've got some seahorses and the colors couldn't be any more perfect, right? How about some seashells? This really reminds me of Easter and all the fun embellishments I found at Easter. These adorable fish. We've got some sea turtles. And I will tell you, I bought these boats, but I did not use them in this tray. When it comes to painting these embellishments, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm not looking to put a ton of detail. So with something like these shells, I'm going to give them a good base coat of the Swan White. And if you really look at this white, you can tell it is not a stark white. I am loving it. 
If you use a stark white, it really is going to stand out too much. If you use a cream, it's going to be a bit too creamy. So I would definitely, in all honesty, go the route of swan white if you can, or maybe an ivory. No, I, I think Waverly has fresh linen that is equal to this, actually. And so I would definitely go one of those two routes. While the base coat of the swan white is still wet, I'm going to go in with some of that coral and I'm going to lightly just brush over the wet paint, giving it a nice blended look, just adding a bit of color to these shells. It really is that simple and I feel like it gets the job done. And so to this beach sign, so it isn't just a beach sign, what better embellishment to add than a seashell at the beach, right here at the bottom, just to add a little something. This is a fun one. This sun, take me to the ocean, I guess plaque, stand-up plaque? Yeah, that's what we'll call it. I'm gonna take the take me to the ocean part away from this and by putting several coats of paint on this, it is going to fill it in and you're going to be none the wiser that it was once there. And I'm gonna put my own saying on it. If you wanna keep that saying, I say go for it. To the top part of this, I am going to add the celery to the bottom part. I'm going to add the agave. And to the top there, since it says sun, we might as well go in with some of that maize. These stickers by Shore Living that you can find at Dollar Tree right now are a perfect addition for embellishments for this beach themed tear tray. So pick some up because that's what I'm using. And so with that, the stand-up plaque is going to have a vinyl decal that says beach in summer. Making this stand-up plaque say sun, beach, and summer. It doesn't get any more summer and beachy than that, right? And why don't we just top it off with some of those cute wooden embellishments, say a shell, and maybe a dolphin here at the top. Oh my word. Yep, a galvanized seashell screaming my name. Only the seashell has holes in it, which we don't need. So to remedy that problem, I'm gonna put just a bit of masking tape here on the back of the shell. Why am I doing that? So when I place some spackling on the front, filling in those holes, it actually stays. When you try to put spackling in something that is galvanized, it typically falls out unless there is something like tape in the back. And so I don't want holes in my shell. If you want holes in your shell, you can have holes in your shell. I don't want holes in my shell. I'm gonna go with a good base coat of that mm -hmm, swan white. I love this white. It might be my new favorite white. I feel like it could be very rustic too and work in a farmhouse DIY. We'll have to see, I'll have to try it out. Once I give this a good base coat, when I go in for that second coat of that swan white, while it is wet, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go in with that coral and give it that seashell look. Give it a bit of color. I am loving this coral with the blues and the hazelnut that I am going with for this tiered tray. It just adds some subtle color and I just feel like this coral is such a fun beach color anyway. Oh, this is a good one. You're gonna need one of these Dollar Tree crates and it's gotta be this exact crate or it won't work. These holes, we don't need the holes in the crate. So guess what I'm gonna do? Use some of Dollar Tree spackling and fill those holes in. You're not gonna wanna use a wet sponge while the spackling is wet on this piece. So you're gonna wait for it to dry then go in with a fine sandpaper and just smooth out those sides there. I didn't show painting this piece because it's a pretty basic piece. Went in with the swan white on the top section, the celery in the center, and the agave in that bottom section. What is this piece an alternative to? This piece is an alternative to my wood books that I add to every tray. Because this crate has three sections, look at that. It doubles as books when you paint the different sections. What a fantastic alternative this is for those who don't want to cut wood. Honestly, I may just use this crate from now on because it's so easy and it's going to save me a trip to the hardware store.
the beach is my happy place because it really is. I always add embellishments to my books. Right now, Shore Life has the Sand Dollars and Sea Stars. They come in a three pack. Great buy for $1.25, I might add. So to these, I am going to give them both a base coat of the Swan White. Of course I am. If you wanna leave them the way they are, you can, but they don't match all my whites, so we gotta stay consistent. After I've got that base coat of the Swan White, for the Sea Star, I'm going to go in with some coral and add just a touch of color to that. To the Sand Dollar, I'm going to add a bit of hazelnut, just adding some detailing to the center and to the edges. I thought I'd top the top of my books off with this Sand Dollar, but of course I want it elevated because I don't put anything just flat on a surface. I have these wood beads on hand. I figured they'd stick a bit better than the foam tape. So I'm gonna hot glue just about three of these smaller beads on that aren't going to show, then just hot glue it right there to the top of the book. And now we have got an elevated sand star on the top of our books. I was feeling like the bindings were a bit too plain and so I took this fish that was on the clothespin, just took off one side of the clothespin and look at that, the other side elevates the fish up off the book. Look at that, how cute is this? This DIY, it's a repeat using these alphabet blocks. If you've got these in your stash, you might as well add them to your tray. It's an easy addition and it's a versatile piece that can be done for any tray, so why not? To these blocks, I decided to go with two celery blocks, one agave block, and one swan white block. What am I gonna put on these blocks? The word sand, because why not? Beach, sand, perfect. Usually I stack these blocks. Today I'm just gonna hot glue them together side by side. Because why? We need one of those cute wood embellishments added to the top of this. Two seashells on the top of this sand. That's just what I'm gonna do. Really? A beach themed fairy garden house? Oh my word, it couldn't be any more perfect than this. And the colors are spot on. Although I'm not much liking the surfboard and I thought I'd add a bit of the yellow, just an excuse to add more of that maize yellow to this. I'm gonna go ahead and customize this cottage by just painting some of those small details to suit my beach theme. And what else am I gonna do? Oh my word, wait for it. Have you seen these hula skirts? It's raffia and it's all tied together. So I'm gonna place some hot glue here on the top of my beach house. I'm gonna take some of this raffia that's tied together here and just place it right on top, adding a grass roof to our beach house. Oh my word, such an easy piece just by adding some simple additions to it really takes it to what level? The next level, it's those fine touches. You can also find the seashell in that mini fairy garden section. Nothing else needs to be done to this. It was meant for this tray. For this one, you're going to need one of these smaller wood crates. You're going to want to fill in those holes as well. That is a must for this. To this wood crate, I'm going to give it a nice coating with some of Waverly's hazelnut. This color sand is perfect, but you can find it. Dollar Tree. I only had this much left, so I went in with some white sand first and topped it off with this perfect colored sand here. You know where I'm going with this, right? Where there's sand, there's beach. Would you look at these fat quarters Dollar Tree has? Perfect, right? I'm gonna go with this one today. What am I gonna do with this fabric? Well, I needed something round, so I went ahead and took the top of my spackling here, turned it upside down, tracing the circle, Ah, uh, that circle is not big enough, but that's okay. Taking my peeking shears because I want a decorative edge around my circle, I'm just gonna use that inner circle as a guide and make it a bit bigger because I'm making an umbrella. For my umbrella, I need to stabilize the center with whatever those metal things are that are in an umbrella. I don't know the correct verbiage of it, but I'm gonna use toothpicks because they'll be perfect and I'm gonna cut them down to size 
Once I've got about eight of them, I'm going to hot glue these toothpicks to the wrong side of the fabric. You can see that I'm leaving a center there because why? Every umbrella needs an umbrella pole, right, to put in the sand. What better for an umbrella pole than a paper straw? Well, you could always use a piece of dowel if you want, but since I've got the paper straws on hand, that's what I'm using today. Seriously, how perfect are these? Only, in my opinion, they need a bit of customizing because they don't match my tray. That's an easy fix. And to what I'm gonna call my beach sandbox, I'm gonna add a cute little beach towel with that fabric. How about that adorable surfboard? Oh my word, this piece is so stinking cute. We've gotta add some cute flip-flops that we customized just a bit. So easy to do, such a versatile piece that you can easily change the color to suit your decor style if this one isn't it for you. And to this, we need to add our umbrella as well. Oh wait, have you seen these adorable mini shells at Dollar Tree? I thought a couple of these would be perfect to hold our beach towel down. The solid color hazelnut box wasn't doing it for me, so I went back over it again and added some of that swan white, giving it, yes, that brush blended look. What better to add to the front of this sandbox than a sea turtle? Sea turtles love to burrow into the sand. And so again, using one of those wood beads, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue it to the sand turtle itself and put it right there on the front of our beach sandbox. A pail. Of course we're gonna add a pail to this, but not in the way that you think. This pail needs a good coating of some of Waverly's agave just to brighten it up a bit. For this DIY, I am using Plaster of Paris because I can't seem to get my hands on the caulking by DAP that you can get at Dollar Tree. That would work perfect too. Went into my stash because I had some Plaster of Paris for those tiles that I've been making. Gonna put that Plaster of Paris in the pail add a bit of water. It's not an exact science for this. You just want to add enough water until you get a nice thick consistency. If your plaster of Paris looks a bit too runny, don't be afraid to add more of the plaster of Paris to it. Once I've got a nice thick consistency, I'm going to take a piece of dowel that I pre-measured out. This one is about four inches tall. I want it in the center because this is going to be a sign in a pail. To hold it in the center, if you just put a couple pencils or a pen there, it's going to keep it in place. Dollar Tree has these adorable sticker packs right now. I loved this, what is this, a life ring? Yeah, a life ring, right? It says lake house on it. How stinking cute is that? The colors are perfect for this. On the front of this pail, I thought what better than to add a cute seahorse. No real reason, I just really like the look of the seahorse, oh my goodness. And to this pail, this sticker pack has these cute little, what are these? Some kind of beach plant that I thought I would add to the sand itself, making us a cute beach house life ring sign. Yeah, because why not? These stickers are a great alternative if you're not gonna go the route of using Linda's embellishment pack. This next DIY is one of my favorites on this tray. It is so easy and there's really not much to it. Here I'm using a piece of copy paper. I cut a strip that's about an inch wide and I'm going to roll it. It doesn't need to be super thick just enough to roll it there, cut it off and hot glue it so it stays rolled. I'm gonna add a piece of twine to the center of it, tying it in a knot and leaving just a couple of small tails. You know where I'm going with this, right? These mini corked bottles have been around Dollar Tree for a while. I got them in two different sizes. I'm gonna go ahead and take that cork off. I know you know where I'm going now. I've made a funnel out of paper and I'm gonna add just a bit of sand to this. I don't know if they really have sand in them or not. I would suppose that they probably don't because they'd sink, but I'm gonna add sand because I like the look of it. And yes, this scroll 
it's gonna go inside this corked jar, making it a message in a bottle. How stinking cute is that? Fun fact, Message in a Bottle is hands down one of my favorite books and movies by Nicholas Sparks. Well, Nicholas Sparks is hands down my favorite author. Such a simple DIY, but really it is one of my favorites because yes, fun fact again, I am a hopeless romantic. This DIY ties in with the last one. Look at that, looks kind of like a scroll, right? So to this, I am going to give it a nice good coating of the Hello Hobby Swan. Once I've got that base coat down, yep, I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Hazelnut because I feel like this will age, I guess, the scroll a bit, give it a bit of that dirty look and just really add a soft, subtle look to it. Adding a bit of a personal touch to this, I wanted this scroll to say, message in a bottle. And why not? Let's just add one of these cute fish because we can. I wanted to add this jar of shells to the tray, but I just didn't want it to be a jar of shells. So I went ahead and emptied out those shells, put a bit of sand, replaced a few of the shells, corked it back up, and I thought that this would be perfect next to those message in a bottles. Truth be told, when I saw these planked fish at Dollar Tree, these were the piece that inspired me to do the tear tray and this is where I got my color scheme from. This is a beautiful color scheme. This is such a fun piece. Nothing else needs to be done to it color wise. I want it to stand on my tray so I'm going to add a Jenga block to the back there. Trick of the trade, easy way to make just about anything stand up. This would be another one of those repeat DIYs because these tags came in a 25 pack, so why not add them to each tray? They're easy to DIY, they're fun to embellish, and so to this tag, I'm gonna give it a good coat of the Swan White, and to this Swan White, I'm gonna add a bit of that coral because I really like that coral, and we need to tie more of that into this tray. I was loving these DIY wood seahorses and I thought that this tag would be perfect to add it to. So this seahorse is gonna get some of that hazelnut along with, yes, some of the swan white. I want this tag to stand up. So I'm using a Jenga block and I'm gonna glue it to the back of the tag itself. And this seahorse, it's gonna find its way on the side here where the hole of the tag is, kind of switching it up a bit. This is a bit of a different tag that I've done in the past, but how fun is that? So cute. This tag definitely needs this beach die cut embellishment added to it. Yep, another one of those repeat DIYs. These wood frames are perfect because they add, yes, height, and they're easy to embellish. I went ahead and painted it with the two tones of blue. Linda made up this anchor die cut that fits perfectly in these. Now, if you can't find the round one, this die cut will fit in any of these frames because the opening is very universal. To these, I'm gonna add the seahorse and the whale didn't even paint them because I was loving the color. I feel like the color brings out the color of the anchor. It all just kind of ties in together. And to this, Linda added some starfish to her embellishment pack that I thought would be fun to add on one side of this frame. Can I just tell you, I love that Dollar Tree is now carrying letter tiles. I use these all the time in my tiered trays. You're getting 26 in a pack, which means you're really only getting one of each letter. Since Beach doesn't have duplicate letters, that's what I'm gonna spell out. I want my tile letter word Beach. Oh my word, that was a mouthful to stand up. So two Jenga blocks are needed. And I figured I'd finish this off too with one of those cute wood embellishments. For this one, 
I'm gonna be adding these nautical wood beads. You know I like to add beads to each of my trays. The color of these beads is perfect. It goes perfect with that swan white. Have I said swan white enough in this video? Each of the stars is gonna get painted. I'm gonna do two with the agave and two with the celery. And that's all that needs to be done to this. Easy addition to this tray. Have I said that yet? There's so many of those on this tray. Wonk, wonk, wonk. Yes, this would be an example of Abiza, my son's dog, getting a hold of these wood beads before I actually got a chance to take a picture of them. My word. These DIY ornaments are a must because they are so easy to DIY and they're perfect for a tear tray. To this starfish, I wanted it to stand up, so I am going to add a Jenga block to it, standing the Jenga block up because we don't want the Jenga block to show at the bottom of the starfish. I did this with some of the swan white and some hazelnut. And to this starfish, I'm gonna add a sticker from Dollar Tree sticker pack that they have right now that says, wish upon a starfish. How perfect is that? To this whale, I added some of the agave as the base coat with a little bit of the swan white mixed in. Added the swan white to the water on the top of the whale. I thought it'd be cute to make this kind of a two-dimensional mommy whale and baby whale. So I took this whale off of the clothespin, added one of the beads, and I'm gonna hot glue it to this one, yes. And because it is 2D type, we don't need a Jenga block in the back because it's gonna stand up all on its own. How cute is that? And repeat, I did the same thing with the sea turtle. You might wanna pick up one of these fishing nets because it'd be fun to drape it over your tear tray before you add all your fun DIYs to it. Who is today's KB Creations crafters of the day? First one's going out to Lorna May, who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY St. Patrick's Day tier tray. I am loving it. We've also got one from Maria Gomez, who is also bringing to us her St. Patrick's Day tier tray. I am loving them both. Thank you both so much for sharing your creations with us today. Pretty cool, right? That you can make a tear tray out of the Jenga blocks for the bargain price of $5 plus another $2 for the, no. Pretty amazing, no. Pretty cool, right? That you can make a wood tear tray for about $7 and using those plaques at Dollar Tree, I love that you can buy them and using those plaques from Dollar Tree even elevates it more so you can switch out the tops of your tray. And oh my goodness, it's just gonna add to the feeling of whatever holiday or special occasion that you've got showcased on your tray. I hope you all enjoy today's Dollar Tree DIY tier tray on a budget using Dollar Tree blocks. If you're looking for more tier tray inspiration, well guess what? You can click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody.